recording our session. Welcome again, uh, families and my colleagues who are here today to share what they do on campus and how they interact with your cadets or your students. Um, if I seem distracted for a moment, it's because I'm trying to catch anyone who's in the waiting room um, and bring them into this fun-filled hour. Um, as always, I will go really quickly over what to expect on the 20th, um, which is Sunday when you move in. You all, um, all your students should have their check-in time already. And when you arrive on campus, you'll be directed to park in uh, parking lot O, and you'll walk into PIAC. And we have Karen Yoder here today, who um, is uh, the 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 owner and 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 our colleague and director for athletics, who takes care of that building, and um, she'll be talking about it a little bit. Um, and then you will have the opportunity to uh, get your uniforms as well as um, meet some of the people you've been meeting on um, on Zoom. You'll be able to meet them in person. Um, after you've picked up your uniforms, you'll be heading to your res hall. Uh, from there, we would like for you to join us at 2 p.m. Um, in the quad for a, a brief reception and then um, remarks from the president in the RISA auditorium. Your students in that time will be practicing formation and uh, they'll be ready for capping when you come out of the, the auditorium from uh, the president's remarks and meeting the cabinet. Um, as I've shared, the capping ceremony is a tradition and it is a uh, moment when we take your students and turn them into our cadets and you'll be capping them. It's really cute and, and sentimental. Uh, right after that brief ceremony, uh, you'll have an opportunity to go run any errands, exchange any uniforms didn't, that didn't fit, um, and then also grab some uh, dinner. I'm very excited to share that our marketplace will be open for dinner that evening, uh, starting at five, and they will be open till seven. Um, and we'd love for you to try out the food that your student uh, or, or your cadet by then will be enjoying in the coming semesters. So stop by and uh, take a look at that. It's got a beautiful view. Um, and I also wanna share that the bookstore uh, will not be open that day, but they will be taking any orders online uh, from you. So just wanted to share that really quickly. Some housekeeping for the call today. Um, just keep your devices on mute. If you think of any questions while our presenters are sharing what they do with you, please write your questions in uh, chat. I will be fielding those after uh, they've all presented. And if there are any questions that are unrelated to sense of belonging, uh, we'll take care of those as well. And um, as always, if you think of anything after, please feel free to text me at uh, my phone number that I've shared with you or email me at orientation at csum.edu. I'll continue to, to um, include some of these things in chat uh, while my colleagues are presenting. Um, and with that, I would like to invite Josie Alexander. Good evening, everybody. Um, my name's Josie. Um, I advise our student government on campus. It's called ASCMA. Um, I'm also the coordinator of student activities, and I run our basic needs program here on campus. Um, Ryan here, uh, who's also on our call, he is also a part of our associated students, and he'll go more into detail about that organization and what he does here on campus. But other things that our associated students do, um, we um, we also have 15 to 17 clubs that are under our associated students. And some of our clubs are more academic in nature, like our Association of Mechanical Engineering, our ASME club. Um, and then others are purely social, like our card club, our force fitness club, our anime club, and such. Um, 
We'll be showcasing our clubs uh, the first week of school. We will have like a mini club rush on our quad. And then in about two to three weeks later, we'll have a much larger club rush on campus. So students will be able to take a look at what clubs are being offered this year. And if your son or daughter doesn't see a club that like they want to join, but they have some other interest in starting a new club, it's super easy to do. You would just send them my way or I would um, get in contact with them and just go over like what the paperwork and the needs to start a club. Um, another area that I oversee um, is student activities and we do all kinds of activities both on campus and off campus. We do karaoke nights on campus, game nights. One of our favorite nights on campus is Taco Tuesdays, um, where we have tacos in Mara Cove and just um, sometimes do a little trivia at those um, night events. We have barbecues um, on campus. Uh, we have a few bands on campus, so we'll do a live music out on our patio and do some other creative events like um, painting and designing t-shirts and making pottery. Um, we also do some off-campus events too, like exploring San Francisco, going over on the ferry, which is right here in Vallejo. Um, we go to uh, Giants games, some concerts, um, local escapes ro escape rooms. A new thing is um, they have these rage rooms. So for students that need to um, take care of some added uh, stress, they can um, go to one of these rage rooms and um, do some fun stuff there. Um, one of our biggest events that students love to go to is we do yoga on a goat farm that's local. Um, we do lots of movie nights both on campus and at the local theaters. Um, we do some um, nights in San Francisco and go to musicals, the ballet, the symphony. Um, ASCMA um, underwrites most of the cost of the tickets. So students really only pay maybe 50% of what it costs um, for that event. We provide transportation to and from events. Um, and if there's an event that's something that we haven't planned that students want to do, again, it's really easy for them to be able to reach out to um, somebody on our ASCMA board or myself to plan an event or to bring somebody to campus. Um, and lastly, um, I do our basic needs program on campus. And what that is, is we have a food pantry on campus that's open to all students. Um, we have kind of uh, dry goods, um, personal care products for students to come in um, anytime during the week. Um, and they can come in as much as they want. Um, it's, like I said, it's open to all students. I also help our students get onto CalFresh um, and help them through the application process there. And then we have, um, a grant program with our bookstore. So if uh, one of the students has some issues with their uniforms or maybe having a hard time getting a textbook or needs some help financially with some of the online programs for their for different classes that they're in, involved in, they can come see me and I can um, help get them a grant through our basic needs program. Thank you, Josie. Um, and we'll popcorn over to Ryan because he's next on my uh, on my screen. Thank you, Vanita. Um, my name is Ryan Okada. I'm a third year marine transportation student. So I'm studying to be a mate on a US flagged vessel. I'm the president of our associated students. So whenever you hear ASCMA, that is the Associated Students of Cal Maritime Academy. And our job primarily is to better students' lives on campus. So that comes in through advocacy. We are the official voice of the students. So when the administration wants to know how students feel about a certain topic or subject, they ask us first. And it's, it's our job to collect you know, the voices of students and bring them, bring them forward. The other way that we help out students is through the events that Josie talked about. We help plan and execute those to make sure that students you know, wanna, wanna go to these events and feel like they can have some fun and they're not stuck on, on our campus all the time, although it is beautiful. 
I saw a couple of questions in the chat. As to a fishing club, we don't have one currently. We have a lot of students that fish, but most people prefer to do it on their own, I guess, kind of the, the solitude aspect. However, if your student wants to start a club, I'm sure they would drum up interest very quickly. As to a scuba club, that's something we're looking into this year. Last year, we had a professor and also an alumni who came back and offered to teach scuba classes. He's a PADI certified instructor, so he donated his time. And this year, we hope to make it a class that students can take at our PIAC and will be able to earn the certification because it is a lot for college students. So that's a little bit about what we do. And the organization itself, AF, is what run almost completely by students. We have Josie to advise us, and we're very lucky for that. But most of the people that work for us and with us are students. And uh, that way we kind of, we can keep everyone's voice in mind and everyone feels that they're heard. Well said, thank you, Ryan. And um, we'll hop over to Karen. Hi, everybody. Um, I am Karen Leoder, the Director of Athletics and Physical Education at Cal Maritime. At Cal Maritime, um, we have 15 intercollegiate varsity programs. We also have a full recreation program, and we also have intramural. So um, within our campus, there's three umbrellas. Um, we also have 23 one-unit physical education courses. So there's a wide of our opportunities um, that are encompassed within the department. Um, as Vanita shared earlier, your day is going to start with us um, in the PIAC, which is a phenomenal building. Um, it is uh, 76,000 square feet, state-of-the-art recreation center um, that is open, and uh, we look forward to having all of your cadets used throughout the year. It has an Olympic-sized swimming pool with bleachers, survival training platform, free weights and circuit training and a cardio exercise room. We have an athletic training and rehab center there. Um, it has a main gym um, with one full basketball court or when the, the bleachers are pulled back, three basketball courts, um, three, or excuse me, two basketball courts in that venue, three volleyball courts, and then seating for up to 700 guests. Um, and then we also have a half court, um, which we um, also support. Um, with a wide variety of recreational offerings and also um, we provide space for some of our club teams. Um, we have Bonner Field, um, which is a synthetic turf field located up on Faculty Drive that's used for not only inter, intercollegiate uh, for our three teams that compete there, practice and compete there, men's and women's soccer and rugby, um, as well as um, for recreational use and intramural use. And then we have those lights on until 9.30 p.m every night of the academic year, uh, because we have to have the light shut down and have folks off there by 10 p.m. due to our, our light ordinance, but it creates a great space for cadets to use. Other um, events and programming within the department include Kill Hall or Fit, that was one of the initiatives in the cadet experience that was launched last year. Um, and that is a multifaceted mental, physical, and emotional program that was um, offering seminars, workshops, and events, and presentation to en en enhance self-care and wellness. Um, and uh, it was really something that um, we launched right after the first of the year, um, but are looking to on go uh, and keep that um, in a part of our program. Um, we also, within the department, offer um, Return on Inclusion, which is an online diversity inclusion education program within the department. Um, which every staff member is certified within ROI. Um, and that platform is designed um, where we talk a, a wide variety of cultural diversity, inclusion, belonging. Um, and we really just uh, wanna make sure that we're overcoming bias, decoding microaggressions and navigating difficult conversations um, and really unpacking racism and anti-racism and privilege on our campus. So um, we like to be a proponent of that. Um, also, some other professional development that's happening in the department is QPR, um, and that is a question, persuade, and refer. Um, so we have in-person training. Our athletic staff is now strategically positioned to recognize and refer someone who's at risk for suicide. So uh, we don't defer from this topic. We just want to make sure that every individual in our department is fully informed, educated, and prepared to help every cadet on our campus, as well as other community members. 
Unfortunately, um, our president of the Council of Cadet Athletes, Ryan Bean, was unavailable tonight, but he also um, not only is a member of the Compass, um, which is a four-pronged leadership group um, that Ryan is also um, a member of, um, but he is also the president of the Watch, and that was another initiative that was launched last year, and that is the spirit section at every home intercollegiate um, event. Um, and we like to pride ourselves that we are not only just starting out this year, but we really uh, want to create an opportunity to have fun, bring the hype, and cheer um, not only the keel haulers in competition, but just creating that collegiality and um, that spirit across our campus. Um, as I talked about the, the Council of Cadet Athletes, that's a leadership group where two individuals for each of our 15 intercollegiate teams are represented and they're a voice um, of which they are bring um, issues up. So if you're a cadet is wanting to participate in one of those 15 intercollegiate teams, we'll be having a presentation um, on the Tuesday of orientation week. So many of the teams have open tryouts and have wonderful opportunities. If they're not looking for an intercollegiate opportunity, we um, also serve over 60% of our, our cadets um, in, in one of the uh, recreation or intramural offerings that we have throughout the year. So really excited to meet um, your cadet and all of you hopefully in orientation week and move in on Sunday. Look forward to answering any questions that may come up tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. And from Karen, we move over to uh, Megan Nance. Thank you, Vanita, and good evening, everyone. My name is Megan Nance. I prefer she, her, her pronouns. Um, I am the Director of Inclusion Initiatives and Educational Opportunity Program. Um, so my role is an inaugural role. Um, and so with that being said, I'm deeply committed to essentially fostering an inclusive and equitable environment on our campus. Um, that kind of goes in hand with um, providing guidance and support to our former foster youth students um, that are a part of our Resilient Scholars Program, which is an inaugural program also coming to Cal Maritime um, this academic year. Um, I also am a part of the Educational Opportunity Program, so working with first-generation low-income students um, to overcome barriers and achieve their educational goals. Um, aside from working with those specific programs, um, I'm also deeply embedded and um, leading the DEI Council, um, the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. And so essentially, we try to have cross-functional collaboration and representation, including cadets' um, perspectives and how we can foster a more inclusive campus. Um, I'm also a part of the Inclusive Excellence Strategic Planning Committee, where we um, design those initiatives and develop those initiatives to provide or foster a more inclusive campus. Um, and outside of the administrative roles um, that this um, particular position encompasses, um, I serve as an acting advisor to two developing identity-based affinity groups. Um, so I work very closely with Josie um, to um, provide more information about student organizations and clubs to our identity-based um, affinity groups, such as the Black Student Association. Um, as well as the Mijente Latin X Club, um, as well as supporting with our Gay Straight Alliance um, Club, which has been a longstanding club um, on Cal Maritime's campus. Um, so just trying to create safe and supportive spaces for marginalized communities that are on our campus. Um, those Administrative roles, as well as um, the direct interactions with cadets happen in our new and improved inclusion center that is moved down to lower campus. We originally um, were housed where um, Karen mentioned in the PIAC. Um, and so we've moved down to campus for, to allow for um, access. Um, and so um, we're really excited about launching that and hopefully we'll have an opportunity during orientation week to showcase um, the new space um, to incoming uh, cadets as well as families. Um, and a, a piece of my role also um, entails um, working directly with cadets to 
basically bring their vision to life in regards to we have a new inaugural Pride in Maritime Summit um, that will be happening in October. Um, I've worked very closely with our Gay Straight Alliance Club, um, as well as other members of our campus community to um, make that dream a reality. And so that will be the first time ever we'll be inviting um, other CSU campuses as well as Maritime Academies um, to this professional development um, opportunity for our LGBTQ plus community. Um, and so um, outside of <laughs> the Pride and Maritime Summit, I also work very closely with cadets um, in regards to Community Day. Um, this is a tradition that has been passed on. Um, we've had two annual Community Days, and now we're moving forward into our third year, um, where we will be um, hosting two um, during this academic year, one in the fall and one in the spring, where we just really showcase and highlight um, the internal campus community, um, their talent their expertise, their knowledge, um, and we really try to also aim to have a topic, an uh, overlying topic um, that focuses on diversity, equity, and inclusion. So um, I, I look forward to answering any questions that you may have about any of those <laughs> roles um, that I mentioned earlier, um, and we look forward to meeting your cadets as well as the families this upcoming week. Wow, thank you. Um... I just wanted to kind of bring, um, circle back to the topic today is called sense of belonging. And um, it's something that we use in our uh, conversations all the time. How do we create an experience for our students so that they feel they belong here with each other, with the, not just their peers, but with all of us who are part of uh, staff and faculty. Um, students get a, a lot of one-on-one -on -one time and uh, with their faculty. Uh, once they're outside the classroom is when they, they need that structure of um, what shall I do? How do I connect with groups? How do I make friends? What can we do together? How do we get like-mindedness um, and, and uh, have an experience that's rewarding and, and allows for development and growth? And the people you see here from campus uh, today are the ones who make that happen. Um, we have uh, one more colleague, and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention her. Her name is Joellen Meislick. She would be part of this panel today, uh, but she's away from campus. Uh, she uh, runs a, a center for uh, cadet engagement, I mean, community engagement uh, and um, community learning. And uh, she contributes significantly to the development and growth of students uh, by bringing the larger community here and taking us, including the cadets, into the larger community um, so that um, we get to know what's outside uh, our gates, so to speak. Um, and we miss her being part of this conversation today, but I just wanted to touch on, on what it means uh, for us. Um, to create that sense of belonging for your students. So if any of you feel like you need to add to that, please do. Um, I haven't seen too many questions, but I'm sure they will come. Um, and if there's anything that um, any of you wanna add for parents to be thinking when they have communications with their students on how to encourage them to participate or um, how they can be our partners in creating this, uh, home away from home uh, for their students, please do share those with the families that are listening today. I mean, I can, I can lead off a little bit. I, you know, I know when students first get here, it's very overwhelming. This is their first time away from home uh, for most of them. Um, and sometimes not knowing anybody here um, can can be, like I said, overwhelming. And, and um, so for my area of like student activities, I mean, we purposely do activities kind of in our quad, like areas that students have to transport through. So um, we're all very intentional about when we do programs to try to invite those students who are walking around campus, around the quad, um, or towards our dining center to really 
like move them in our direction to make a t-shirt um to really help out uh a lot of times we um like uh Vanita said with Joellen uh, Meislick, we will make some things and actually donate it to our local community so making blankets we really try to encourage students to again to really get involved we communicate and um post what's going on out on our social media and around campus so students know like there are activities that they can easily access and then for me and for others like our student leaders that I advise and others advise we really talk with them about reaching out to the student and looking having eyes to make sure if there is somebody that's always in their room and not really looking like they're not um, able to make so many so many friends those student leaders are reaching out to those students to bring them out of their room, to bring them down to the quad, um, to be able to bring them out to different student activities that maybe are low level that they're starting to make friends and so that they feel that they're a part of the campus. Um, I just wanna add to that, that um, we often talk about student leaders or cadet leaders. Um, just want you to know that we have a total of 105 cadet leaders uh, leading positions on our campus, and they are um, distributed across the board. So like Karen um, mentioned earlier, there are leaders within the athletic uh, area. There's um, leaders that we call RHOs through the housing and residential life area. Um, we have leaders that are part of Josie's area, which Ryan mentioned is called ASCMA. And finally, we have leaders within the core uh, staff. So uh, each student becomes part of the core and that core of cadets has its own structure of leadership between the three companies and companies go into divisions and all of that, the, the breakdown, every level has someone who is trained to lead and, and, and be able to identify needs of uh, our incoming students and connect them with the resources that meet those needs. So we have that that leadership kind of spread across, across the fabric of our campus. And I'm sure Megan will share what some of the leaders within her area that she's trying to develop. Yes, so within um, educational opportunity program, we have what we call peer mentors. Um, and these essentially just by the title are mentors. Um, they work very closely with incoming um, cadets as well as um, continuing cadets just to ensure that, um, you know, if they're having anxiety about a test, um, that they're checking in with those individuals. Um, if they need additional resources, whether that's with tutoring, academic advising, um, counseling and psychological services, um, or even just need to do a quick check up um, at our student health center for a cold. Um, they're always kind of checking in. Um, they are um, essentially there to support them and a safety net just in case. Um, and so during our cadet leader training that happened last week, um, and now we're in our summer bridge program, they're building that community um, and those bonds at this time. Um, so they're working very closely with those incoming cadets to make sure that they feel that they have a home away from home. Um, and that's essentially what the inclusion center um, is also based on um, with our unity partners at the inclusion center. They also work very closely with other cadets um, to make sure that they feel as if they have a safe space to land. Um, if they're having a very stressful day um, or things get chaotic, um, they're trained to identify, um, as Vanita st stated, the needs of those cadets um, and try to serve them to the base best of their capability. And if they're unable um, to do that, they know how to reach out to different resources um, so that those individuals will be able to provide them with professional support. So um, those are some of the ways in which the Educational Opportunity Program and the Inclusion Center um, use our cadet leaders in order to support support incoming students. Thank you. Um, before I jump into questions that are uh, popping up, is there anything uh, Ryan or Karen want to add? No, I, I think we're ready for questions unless you okay. have anything. <laughs> All right. Um, so, um, there was a question, I'm going all the way back uh, to 
We know that we don't yet have a fishing club. What about scuba diving? Do we have a scuba diving club? We're working on it. Okay, okay. Um, uh, this is slightly off topic, so please bear with me. There was a question about the 2 p.m. ceremony, which is our, um, the ceremony, if you're talking about the capping ceremony, that's happening at three o'clock. At two o'clock, we'll just have a bit of a reception for the families and then the meeting with the president. Uh, while the students will be on the quad doing some practice. Um, the three um, o'clock ceremony, yes, you need to be in your uniform, but it's your PT gear. So it'll be your shorts and your t-shirt. And if it doesn't fit based on what you picked up just that morning, um, you should get enough of a time to run back and pick up a slightly different size. And if you're absolutely unable, just if you can just wear what you have and do the exchange a little bit later, that would be fine. Um, then uh, I appreciate your kind words, Brady. Thank you. Um, if the uniform doesn't fit, so again, uh, you'll have an opportunity throughout the day till 7 p.m. to swap out anything that didn't fit. And as far as the length of the pants is concerned, none of the pants that the students are gonna get will have hemmed edges. We will measure them on Tuesday um, evening in their dorms, in their res halls, and they will be sent out for alterations. There'll be no charge for it. It's part of the uniform packet. Um, and they will not need to wear those khaki pants or black pants until Friday. So there should be no concern. For the whole week uh, until Friday, they'll be in their PT gear. This one is for Karen. Is uh, is there a men's volleyball team or availability around men's volleyball? So we currently have a co-ed uh, volleyball. We don't have men's or women's intercollegiate. So maybe Josie can speak to the the co-ed um, club volleyball team. Yeah, we have a, a volleyball club that um, they play usually two, three times a week up at the gym. And um, <clears throat> there'll be more information about who the new leaders for that club are. And they'll arrange uh, what's the best time to be able to play. Um, but they're pretty active. Uh, I know last year or the year prior, they, this club um, also played in a local league. Um, off campus in Benicia. So, I, you know, again, it's a possibility. But last year, mostly they just played amongst themselves. There was enough of them to be able to shuffle in and out, and they would play for two hours at a time. Awesome. Thank you. Um, we're very fortunate to have uh, Megan uh, this evening because she has firsthand uh, response on this question. During orientation week, are there activities that promote making friends? So Megan served on the um, committee to that created the program for orientation week, so she can share that with us. Yes, thank you. Um, so orientation has been reimagined this year. Um, we have received lots of feedback from previous years. And so we took that feedback into account. Um, and so what we've done is created what we call orientation groups um, that are different from um, one's division. So usually an incoming cadet would be placed into their division. Um, they usually live um, with their division. Um, they have the same classes, et cetera. And so in order to um, diversify that friend group um, or that opportunity to make friends, um, we have created orientation groups. Um, and so they will be able to come together um, for a really fun activity that we have planned for Tuesday's orientation, um, which is called the carousel, um, where they will be able to go around to different student services and resources in this orientation group um, and get to play different games, um, engage with the different resources on campus, um, get to know um, some of our staff and faculty members one-on-one um, -on -one and have those personal interactions. Um, and so there will be plenty of opportunity for them to um, bond with new folks that may be outside of their major or outside of their division. Um, and also kind of tying into that is what we have um, is a tradition of the Commandant's Cup. So they will also have an opportunity to engage in physical activity um, with um, some of their incoming cadet peers. So plenty of time and space um, to build that community among our cadets. 
So Megan has just highlighted two of the, the things um, that break students up, but they have a common read program that also gives them an opportunity to discuss a book uh, within that group. And those are not divisions. Uh, if you remember from a prior evening, um, divisions are by major. So if you are an engineer, you'd be broken down into 1E, 2E, 3E, 4E. Uh, if you're a DEC, you will be um, D1, D2, 3, 3, D4. I know my alphabet. Um, and so these groups during orientation are not that. So they are just some other mix, which we, which is a secret. Um, so they will, they'll have an opportunity to mix and also every session during orientation this year is uh, potentially a small group. So you're not 300, 200 people in one large space. Uh, they're broken down in small groups and they go different places and uh, have, have that opportunity to connect. Um, there, uh, the next question from Sarah is about, um, are, are there gonna be early mornings or will some of these opportunities happen after dinner? The answer is yes and yes. Um, orientation will start at 7.20 a.m. So there will be early mornings. Um, and there is definitely at least one opportunity for students to meet after dinner and have a bunch of fun. That's what we are calling the Commandant's Cup. Um, and one division will win at the end of the week and will be the proud owner of a very large Commandant's Cup. Um, are incoming cadets paired with upperclassmen? I can go ahead and respond to this, um, <laughs> just in terms of orientation and format that we've um, tried to reimagine. Um, yes and no um, to kind of answer that question. So um, essentially they will receive an orientation leader as we, as I stated before with an orientation group. That's a very small group um, that may not be based on division or major. Um, it is will be just randomized and they will be able to connect with that orientation leader, um, receive their contact information, kind of receive like a little cheat sheet of different resources um, and student services. Um, and so that will be an individual that they will be paired with um, during orientation week. Um, so they will definitely have the opportunity to extend that um, relationship beyond orientation week um, and be able to kind of check in with that individual um, ongoing. So that will be an opportunity as well. And then I'm sure that there are some other folks that may be able to speak to um, other opportunities for upperclassmen to pair with incoming. I mean, I, I can speak with the divisions. Um, when students are placed in a division, again, um, there are underclass and upper class that are a part of the, these divisions, and they might not exactly be paired one-on-one -on -one with um, a cadet, but there's always, there's four or five or sometimes six leaders within that division that will be overseeing your cadet. So um, there's a lot of um, I, I think peer-to-peer -peer, um, help throughout their time here at Cal Maritime. And I can't help but mention this again, that we can be here and create programming for students all day long, all week long, but at the end of the day, they must engage. Just like always, I always say they must be their uh, best favorite, most uh, keen advocates. They also have to be responsible for wanting to get out there, put themselves out there, which is which is not easy. It's a, you, you, it's a you know you have to share your vulnerability and be out there and be willing to make new friends and try new things. So again, as our partners, um, please encourage them to use those opportunities that we create for them um, to get out there and and find people that they will learn to love. Um, there's plenty of them, at least 218 of them coming just this Sunday. Um, so keep that in mind and always encourage them to try out uh, the programming that we plan. Um, I also, uh, I saw some uh, really um, nice words in here. Thank you guys for having your faith in us. It means a lot that you're trusting your most precious um, you know, family member with us and sending them uh, here. 
Um, so thank you for those, uh, those uh, compliments. Um, on the 20th, what time do cadets need to be back on campus for the night? Um, 6.30. We need you to be back on campus by 6.30. Capping will end at 3.30, so you'll have three hours to maybe go to Target and get the toothbrush that they want, the Batman one that's battery operated. Um, but if that doesn't happen or they don't confess that they want the Batman toothbrush, we will take them to Target on Friday night. We'll have some shuttles going to Target. Um, but you need to be back at um, 6.30, please. Uh, they do have some stuff that they, they need to attend to that, that night. Um, so that was that question. Um, Heather, um, could you please email me at orientation at csum.edu and I'll see what we can do about the class schedule. Um, we have a 1 p.m. res hall check-in time. How much time will we have to get uh, the, the room put together? Um, you need to be down at the quad at two o'clock. So just time yourself, give yourself 45 minutes. Once capping is complete, you can go up again and do whatever that wasn't done. And just as a convenience, we have worked very hard to have the, the, the dining hall open, the marketplace will be open. So if you end up taking some time uh, back in the room, you'll be able to come down 226 stairs to go really have a guilt-free um, dinner at the dining hall. But you can also drive if you want. Um, how many freshmen are there this year? 218 as of this afternoon. Uh, and growing. Um, I might have missed in the beginning of the session, what are the hours of the wake room? I can share with that. Um, I'm happy to announce that this year uh, PF will be open, which is where the weight room is located um, from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday through Friday. It will be closed during formation from 7 to 7.45 a.m. on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, and then it will be open from 10 to 5 p.m. on Saturday and 10 to 5 p.m. on Sunday. Great. Um, while you are thinking of any other questions for this group, uh, I just want to remind everybody that uh, you might be doing some walking and stair climbing. Uh, please wear comfortable flattish shoes for the day. Um, and also please dress in layers because it can get really warm in the afternoon. And then before you know it, it gets chilly. So having a couple of layers will be great. Uh, I know your cars will be super full when you arrive. Um, so when you get a, a big tote box, uh, the, the Costco size tote box, filled with uniforms. Uh, if you cannot fit that in your car, driving from PIAC uh, up to your res hall, worry not. We will have a sticker given to your student with their name on it, and they can put the sticker on the box and leave it at the front of uh, PIAC, and we will have um, some staff who's going to be driving uh, a flatbed between PIAC and your res hall throughout the day. So we'll get it to your uh, to your res hall that, uh, that afternoon. Um, we'll keep moving so it won't take hours before you see your box, but we will have that uh, facility or uh, flexibility with the extra baggage that we provide you. Um, Sarah wants to know sports clubs offered throughout the day or do they tend to be in the evenings or weekends? I can take, um, we do have some sports clubs. Um, our volleyball club, we consider a sports club. Uh, we have a rugby, men's rugby sevens club. Um, they're mostly active in the spring semester because that's the season for rugby sevens. Um, and they practice uh, usually three times during the week uh, after classes, uh, usually from five to seven or seven to nine out on Bodner Field. We have a women's rugby um, club, 
And again, they practice usually with uh, the rugby sevens um, men's team because um, it's the same coach that oversees both of those teams. We have a running club um, and they tend to run the bridge um, or run in different state parks around our area. And they um, tend to do their runs again, um, usually starting around five, four thirty, five o'clock. Um, and then they will, during the academic year, they don't so much compete with other campuses. They will um, usually do runs that are sponsored throughout um, California or Northern California. They'll do like a half marathon or a marathon that's um, located in the area. Um, if there's other like sports clubs that we don't have, um, we, you know, students are encouraged to start that club. Um, so. Sarah wants to know if there is a crew or sail club slash team. So just to, I don't want to put words in Sarah's mouth, but there's a difference between club and then intercollegiate. So intercollegiate, it competes against other colleges. Um, and then our, our club teams, they may uh, venture out into other events, uh, but there's, uh, we do have uh, intercollegiate men's and women's crew. And then we have um, intercollegiate dinghy and we have intercollegiate offshore. So um, depending upon the level of, what um, your cadet wants to compete in, all of that will be um, illustrated the difference levels um, on Tuesday of orientation week where they can meet those, those coaches. Thank you. So as always, um, if there is anyone on the call, um, who was not able to type in uh, their questions for any reason, this is a good time for you to unmute and ask your question verbally. Uh, we're good to do that. And those who are still thinking of questions, keep typing them in. I did share um, a link for uh, Key Lawler Families um, Facebook group. Please uh, do join that if you are a Facebook follower. Um, there are a couple of questions that um, I ha I, you need to answer to get accepted into the closed group. So please uh, do fill those out and um, hope to see you there. When I do a, a few posts uh, throughout the semester with photographs of your student uh, and other updates from uh, the campus. So it's a good place to stay connected. Um, and in addition to that, uh, please talk to your students. If they have not yet submitted their photo, um, I definitely need those. I I'm missing about 140 photos. Um, so talk to your student. If um, you have one of them who hasn't, uh, it's perfectly fine. Just send it to me directly at orientation at csum.edu, or if they can uh, submit it on the um, on the portal, which is uh, which I can share again, but uh, it's available online. Um, I have a question that says, is basketball offered in the intercollegiate program? Yes, Carrie, we have both men's and women's um, basketball, they compete in the CalPAC conference, um, which currently um, faces um, nine different institutions within the state of California and currently Arizona. Um, so we compete in the NAIA sport organization uh, and our conference is the CalPAC conference. And um, I will put in the chat um, the actual website that folks can then explore our athletic offerings as well as recreation and your mirror offerings. So I'll put that in the chat so you can click on that. Um, we have a legacy student who's gonna be joining us, uh, Cadet Gamble, thank you very much. Um, all right. Do we have any more questions coming up? 
Do cadets usually walk or run from uh, PIAC to the campus or is there a shuttle? Uh, so Sarah, we do not have any shuttles. They can walk, they can definitely run if they wish. Uh, we uh, do have some limitations, but they can skateboard uh, and many of them use their bicycles. Um, so they could bike from the outside um, end of the campus, which is where we have one of our residence halls. And then next to the residence halls um, is a parking lot, which is where most of the incoming students will get a spot if they, um, if they applied in time. And then next to the parking lot is uh, the PIAC. So if they are going to be um, kind of getting from those uh, from that end of the campus to what we call lower campus, which is where their classes are, um, those are all the ways that they can get around. There is a path along the way, um, so and it's protected away from the street, so they can use that. Um, I hear the pack four might be looking for teams. That's a Karen question. No, I, I, I appreciate Ken's, um, he's been following national news that the pack 12 is dissolving after this year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, we are happy in the NAIA where we are and we'll let the NC2A dissolve with the money-making business scheme as they are. <laughs> Is there more information on Parents Weekend? Um, Parents Weekend is October 6th and 7th, not the 8th as yet. If there is any change to additions of activities for the 8th, we'll let you know. Um, what I can share is that we're planning a reception on the 6th around 5.30. We'll do a bit of registration, some music, some time together. Uh, and then the next morning, we'll start with around 9.30 with some uh, registration for folks who are joining us for Saturday. Uh, we'll take you to formation um, and um, have you hop into your t-shirts that we'll be giving out. Um, and after that, um, there are some activities planned. This year, we're really excited that we will also have our Alumni Association um, gathering on the same Saturday, which is the 7th. And um, I invite Karen to talk a little bit about another inaugural pro program on that same Saturday. Yeah, I'm really excited that we are launching the first ever uh, Cal Maritime Athletics Hall of Fame. We're having a brunch on October 7th and happy to report that we have uh, selected as a committee our incoming inaugural class. So it's going to be really exciting um, and hopeful one of your cadets five years post their graduation will be inducted in that hall of fame as well. So um, I can also um, answer Carrie's question in regards to the attire to be worn during working out. Um, so Carrie, um, they, one of the uniforms that cadets have is the PT, the physical um, attire that they can wear. But you know, if they work out five days a week that they might not be able to get to the laundry facility. So we encourage them to have other Cal Maritime gear swag on that's sold at the bookstore. Um, but they also can wear other athletic wear as long as they are covering the important parts. Um, they don't have to be in formal uniform when up in PIAC. Um, so just hopefully that answers your question on that. But we encourage them to be there five to seven days a week working out and focusing on their their health. Thank you for catching that, Karen. It, I didn't see that question, so um, I'm glad you did. Um, so that's what is going on on the seventh. We will have some. Uh, we'll have an opportunity to take you uh, for a, a a very short boat ride that will be. Um, uh, run by our uh, more experienced cadets and we'll have some other activities planned out. Um, paint and sip is on the docket, but without the sip, I think. Um, <laughs> but we will uh, keep you posted on the details of um, that day, but it'll start around 9.30 and we will end with a, um, a thank you and a raffle at 5.30 on Saturday. And Sunday is likely going to be time on your own with your student for, you'll have come this far. So you'll have that Sunday uh, 
to enjoy. All right, any last words from the presenters? Uh, we look forward to seeing you um, on Sunday, the 20th. Thank you. Welcome to the family. <laughs> Thank you. Thank all you all. Right. Absolutely. It's been, it's been fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so this was our last session. I appreciate, uh, once again, I saw that we had uh, a nice following. I saw the same names uh, from uh, Tuesday to Thursday to Tuesday to Thursday. I appreciate that. And um, the sessions are being very regularly, uh, very regularly posted on our webpage. So if you uh, ever want to go back and um, see that, that, that would be fine. They're there. Um, and I want to really, from the bottom of my heart, thank you, thank all the, the presenters today for taking the time of their evening to be here, and um, I appreciate all of you. Um, Sarah, uh, the hours for Marketplace on Sunday are 11 to 1, and then it, it opens back up at 4, and I think it goes till 7, so you'll have plenty of time to um Grab a meal with a beautiful view. Four hours early, but I think we did it. <laughs> Four uh, minutes early, I'm so sorry, uh, not hours. Uh, thank you for being with us. And if you would think of anything that we didn't cover, orientation at csum.edu, reach out to us. We're excited to receive you on uh, Sunday the 20th. Have a nice evening, bye-bye. See you Sunday. Thank you, guys. Bye.